Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Another Set of Eyes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how to find the last number in a column. I'm going to show you two different ways of doing that and why it could be useful to you. So let's take a look. Here's our scenario. We have three different customers. You could have 3,000 customers, it really doesn't matter. And I have a summary sheet here. And I'm just showing two different ways here that we're going to be able to extract from each of the customers the balance of their account. So if we look at the three different accounts, I have customer one, two, and three. In customer one, I have each one of their transactions, the date, what they purchased, what they paid, and then what their balance due is. And you can see customer one has seven different transactions and the current balance is $25. Customer two, has 23 different transactions and his current balance is 515 and customer 3 has 14 different transactions with a current balance of 250 and again we can see those 25, 515 and 250 on each one of these but as you noticed the final sum or the current balance is at a different row for each one of the three. On row 8 there, row 24 there, and on customer 3 it's on row 15. So how did we do it? Let's take a look. I have column C hidden so I'll expand that out. So the first way we did it in uh, the upper section is using VLOOKUP. So we took VLOOKUP and if we take a look at VLOOKUP we see equals V lookup, it looks for the value in the leftmost column of a table. As you can see with V lookup, we want the lookup value, the table array, the column index, and the range lookup. So the, the first item is the lookup value. And what we've put in here is 9.9 E plus 307. That's called the big number in Excel, and that basically indicates the largest number that Excel can actually handle. In any case, that's our lookup value. And what happens with VLOOKUP when we use the true function is it's going to look up the largest number uh, in a list, or we're asking it to look up a number. If it can't find it, it's going to return the last number in that column. So if we put the absolute largest number possible, it's never going to find it, so it's going to just return the last number or look for the last number within that column. The table array is the customer tab or the customer worksheet 3, column D. The column index is 1 because my table array is just one column wide. And the range lookup with true or false is I'm going to use 1, which is true, which is an approximate match because I'm not going to have an exact match to find that big number within Excel. So basically what it's done is it looks for that number in customer tab in column D and it looks it up in the first column of that table array and it's looking for an approximate match. And since it'll never find that large number, it's going to return the very last number in that column or in that table array and in this case that last number is 25 there, 515 there, or 250 for customer number three. So that's one approach to finding the last number in a column. The other method is using index. So if we take a look at index, we see that index returns a value or reference of the cell at the intersection of a particular row or column. If I hit tab, it's going to ask me for the array, the row number, and the column number. So my array is customer one column D. The row number is going to be the count of the numbers in that plus one. And why I chose plus one is count counts numbers. If we look at equals count, it's going to count the numbers of cells in a range. Well, if we look at the range of cells, the count of the numbers is going to be this, but since I'm looking at all of column D, which includes the header, I want the count of the numbers plus one to give me the appropriate row. So again, back to index and the syntax for that, the array we see is column D. The row number is going to be the count of numbers in column D plus one, and then the column number is one because we only have one column within that array for the index. So again, it's going to give me, based on the count, that 
row number within that index array. So in this case, it's going to give me where 25 is. It's going to give me row 8. Here it'll give me row 24. And here it will give me row 15. And in this case, I've been able to return the last number in each column. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.